Good morning and happy Halloween. It is October 31st, 2022, and we're gonna go over some of the headlines. I don't know why I find the news so funny, but it just, they give us so much material for free. It's like, you don't even need a Netflix account. All you need to do is to just look at what liberals are doing and you're gonna have plenty to laugh at. So let's pop the top on a cold one here. My favorite sound. 160 milligrams of caffeine. Highly artificial orange flavor. Absolutely delicious. What's happening on Twitter this morning? Well, first things first. This little two minute video I came across of a trans barista having a meltdown in the back room of a Starbucks where he works because eight hours is too long to work in a single day. I don't know how many of you have ever worked an eight hour work day, so you might know what it's like. You might know that it's practically impossible. I mean, your emotions are completely destroyed. I don't know how anybody does it, but let's hear what this passionate young man has to say about how hard a eight hour work day is. People wonder why we need a union at Starbucks and I am literally about to quit. Like, I, I don't know Literally. if I'm going to do it, but, like, I really want to. I almost walked out today, and I'm crying in the back room right now, and I almost cried on the floor. It's just... I almost cried on the floor. I, like, I get, I'm, I'm like, a full-time student. I get scheduled for 25 hours a week. 25 and on weekends, hours. they schedule me the entire day, open to close. I'm on the schedule for eight and a half hours, <laughs> both Saturday and Sunday. I'm, like, three and a half hours into my shift. There's so many customers, and we have four people on the floor oh all day. Guys, he works 24, 25 hours a week making coffee while he goes to school and he can't handle it. That's the generation of men. I don't care that you're now trying to be a woman or I can't tell if you're a woman who's trying to be a man. It doesn't even matter to me. I worked with plenty of men and women my entire 20s and teen years. Guys, I started working at 14 years old illegally under the table making five dollars an hour guess how long per day eight hours per day and the lines were extremely long and there were maybe three or four other co-workers in the building i'm pretty sure if i could do that while going through puberty at 14 years old you can do this as a fully grown college student but this is like the level of snowflake, the level of sensitivity of alleged men that we are dealing with. And it's like, that's not even men, anybody. Now look, women clamored and said as loud as they possibly could that we deserve equal representation in the workforce. So whether this is a, a, a man, woman, trans, trans woman, trans man, whatever this thing is, if you want to work an eight hour work day and you want to be compensated for an eight hour work day, then you don't get to sit here and bitch about how hard an eight hour work day is. Literally crying on the, in the back room. I can't deal with these people, man. I can't even, I, I got 38 seconds into that two minute video and I just can't watch anymore. Um, I'll go back and watch it later because I'm sure it's really, really funny. But uh, I, yeah, like, come on guys. Next up, what's up? What else is in the news? Oh man. We got more Kanye. This is a quick one though, guys. It's like 15 seconds. The thing about the red hat that drove me to a point of exhaustion, which was misdiagnosed by a, I'm not going to say what race, what people, uh, doctor and what hospital and what media went to. We know I can't say that. It was a Jewish doctor. <laughs> The thing about the red hat that drove me to a point. Of <laughs> oh my goodness, Kanye. Like, I'm not going to say it. We know we can't say it. I'm not going to say it. It was a Jew. <laughs> <coughs> Kanye, you're killing me, man. You're killing me. <coughs> so that's Kanye just being Kanye. The man who keeps on giving. Um, what next? Okay, we got Twitterites, progressive Twitterites, melting down, literally the worst day of their life, now that Elon Musk has taken over and that they have to tolerate free speech in the same space as they occupy. 
got a handy little uh, meme here that talks about pre-Elon pre versus post-Elon. So before Elon was around, any time a conservative would criticize the Twitter platform about the amount of censorship that they were suffering from, that their voice wasn't allowed to be heard. These are the kind of things that the Twitter loyal would say. They'd be like, well, if you don't like it, then go make your own Twitter. Twitter is a private company. It can do whatever it wants. The government must not regulate private companies. Twitter doesn't even matter in the real world. Only a small fraction of the population uses Twitter. They didn't have any problem with the billionaire Jack Dorsey owning Twitter beforehand. Now let's look at what the liberal Twitterites are saying now that Elon Musk owns Twitter. It's impossible to make our own Twitter. Twitter under ownership of Elon must abide by our hate speech rules. Really, I thought you guys said, you know, if you don't like it, just go make your own platform. Twitter cannot do whatever it wants. It's literally fascist and killing people. <laughs> well, I thought you said Twitter is a private company and it could do whatever it wants. Government must regulate and break up Twitter to stop it from becoming a platform of hate. I, I thought you said the government must not regulate private companies. An evil billionaire is taking over the largest mainstream internet media. Twitter is the public marketplace of ideas. But earlier you were just saying Twitter doesn't even matter in the real world. It's only like a small fraction of the population. But now it's the Twitter public marketplace of ideas. That's strange. <clears throat> and then you have the billionaire thing. Elon, the billionaire, buying Twitter instead of solving world hunger is literally so selfish. Previously, they had no problem whatsoever with billionaires like Jack Dorsey owning Twitter or, of course, Jeff Bezos owning Washington Post, the single most influential newspaper in the country. So, guys, what, what all of those examples glaringly point out is that these people just speak out of both sides of their mouth based on whatever emotions they're feeling that day. It has nothing to do with facts. It has nothing to do with laws. It has nothing to do with the Constitution, any of that stuff. It's purely... How can I put myself in the best position to force my opinion on other people and not allow them to respond with their own opinion? That is their entire worldview. It's sad and uh, it's un-American. These people honestly don't deserve the freedoms that they have because they clearly don't adhere to the doctrine that allows and enables that freedom. But we're working on that one day, one day at a time. Last one here, guys. We're going to do a quick wrap-up this morning. The Atlantic Magazine, which is far left, full of awful ideas, every single issue. Um, these are the people that push gender ideology and critical race theory and think open borders are a great thing. Um, they're the ones who push uh, vaccine mandates. You know, These are the same people that say, my body, my choice, when it comes to abortion. But then the moment you say, yeah, actually, I don't think I need a vaccine, they say, you have to get a vaccine. It's not your choice. Remember when I said they, they talk out of both sides of their mouth, just purely trying to push their opinions? They're a joke. Everybody knows they're a joke. Everybody with three brain cells knows they're a joke. But anyway, here's what the Atlantic has to say now. This is so, so, so trite. Let's declare a pandemic amnesty. We need to forgive one another for what we did and said and who we were in the dark of COVID by Emily Oster. Give me a fucking break. Fuck you. You're the same person who told me I couldn't come to my own family's holidays if I wasn't masked up and quadruple vaccinated. Fuck you. You're the person who had everybody's business shut down because you thought that they were transmitting COVID which we found out was a lie, has nothing to do with whether or not you're vaccinated or not. <clears throat> Fuck you from every direction possible, okay? You're the reason we're suffering from this catastrophic inflation, why our economy is absolutely destroyed, why the price of home mortgages has gone up 50%, because you are the kind of person who said that we have to shut down the entire economy and all of our schools over getting a cold. You are so fucking gullible and you can't think for yourself that the minute Fauci got on that podium and said, you gotta get the vaccine, you gotta get the vaccine. Clearly, when he had a profit motive to do so, you came in, supported him, pushed that message to millions of people, and now we have people dying from getting the vaccine itself. 
miscarrying, blood clots, myocarditis. These are the people who actively ignore, and I guarantee you, they have never once been to the VAERS website to actually look at the adverse effects of the vaccine. They have completely put blinders on and want to pretend like they're, they're just saying it right here. We need to forgive each other. We need to pretend like that shit didn't happen. I need to want, I, I want to be on the side of the right side of history. I don't want you to remember that I completely demonized you and tried to kick you out of this country, out of your family, out of your job, out of your workplace. Like, no, Emily Oster. You are the worst part of America. The Atlantic Magazine, you are the worst part of America. So, I think that's enough news for today. Um, why don't we, we'll, we'll do a quick scroll through just to see if anything else catches my eye. Uh, but those were just the four stories that really stood out to me and um, I wanted to go over them. Uh, let's see, I found something in a blood sample yesterday. Anybody doing with this? Yeah, so people are talking about graphene in the vaccine and if there's any kind of treatments to remove the graphene for people who have been vaccinated who are worried about it. Um, so that's a good subject. I do believe over the next year or two that there's going to be a new product category in the field of medicine for people who have been vaccinated who want to essentially try to detox and fix the damage that was done by the vaccine. Unfortunately, the damage is, it's not that the damage is already done and that it can't be biologically reversed. There is probably medicine capable of doing that. <laughs> but the problem with that is that there's an underlying aspect of trust on medicine to buy that medicine and then to use it. So if the freaks selling the COVID vaccine are the same freaks that are going to try to sell you the cure for the COVID vaccine. How is that going to work? No one's going to trust them. So even if they actually have effective medicine to strip the graphene, avoid the blood clots, avoid the myocarditis, avoid the miscarriages, no one's going to trust you to buy those products because you completely destroyed the entire nation's trust in the medical institution. completely preposterous. Forgive and forget. No. Uh, the amount of censorship on Twitter doesn't just pertain to, oh, you said something in a tweet that the moderators, the moderators at Twitter don't like. And so we're going to deprioritize that tweet in the algorithm or just flat out remove the tweet, ban the user. The censorship also relates to the amount of followers an individual user can gain. So for example, you have Ted Cruz here saying in the nine days before, Eli before Elon got here, I gained a total of 11,000 followers. The instant Elon walked in, in the last four days since then, I've gained 85,000 and counting. <clears throat> Interesting. Statistical anomaly. Da, 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 da. What else we have here? We have Biden touching what appears to be a very young girl on the breast. Why am I not surprised? Um, look, I'm not going to split hairs on that one. Was that a kiss on the mouth? Hold on. Oh. It was. I don't know who this little girl is, um, but apparently, I hope her parents are okay with kissing an 80 year old man on the mouth and him feeling her breasts in public. I, got, I gotta take a drink on that one. I gotta take two drinks on that. I need a shot after that, that's what I need. I need Jack Daniels, even though it's early in the morning and I don't drink, I need Jack Daniels to sit here and watch the United States president grope and kiss a very young female. I mean, she looks like she's a teenager and you know, with the way kids age nowadays, it's hard to say. Like she could be anywhere from 14 to 20, I can't tell, but she's, she's definitely young. Can we figure out who this little girl is? Who is this young lady? Why is she letting him do this? 36 comments. Gross, money, power imbalance. 
she wasn't letting him. She tried to back up and get away from him, but he kept going after her chest. It's his granddaughter with the puke emoji. Um, it's his granddaughter. Yeah. Oh, God. Okay. So, America is divided into two halves right now. There are the people who have read Ashley Biden's diary, and there are the people who have not. There are the people who have looked at the content on Hunter Biden's laptop, and there are the people who have not. The people who have not, when you bring up these subjects, try to say, what does that have to do with Joe Biden? That's his kid's business. They're not the president of the United States. Okay. They're trying to deflect and cover for the man that they love, for the political party that they vote for, obviously. Obviously. However, this isn't even controversial. Like, you can read a copy of the diary. You can watch the videos off of the laptop. The videos containing Hunter Biden smoking crack, weighing crack on a scale, hiring prostitutes, naked with his dick flopping around. And on the other side... When you read Ashley Biden's diary, you can read about a years and years long struggle, decades long struggle with drug addiction, cocaine, heroin, sex addiction, that she herself, I'm not trying to mince words here, I'm not trying to read between the lines, I'm not trying to interpret, she herself said in her diary that her father, if you're keeping track, that's Joe Biden, the president of the United States of America, used to shower with her when she was a teenager. And those showers, including other activity, she believes in her own words led to her sex addiction and that they were probably inappropriate. Sex and drug addiction, I should say, too. Not just the sex addiction. And so then when clips like this surface, where you see Joe Biden accosting underage boys and girls, he's done it to both, ones that are related to him, in this case it's his granddaughter, which doesn't surprise you when he did these things to his own son and daughter, these things are highly relevant facts. And then you get into the fact that the diary and the laptop, all that information and the disgusting implications that it contains were intentionally suppressed by big tech before the 2020 election. Facebook and Instagram were told by the federal government, don't let these stories out. Because we know how it's going to look. And people are not going to vote for Joe Biden if they know these things. So you have the United States government colluding with these social media platforms to hide the truth about political candidates so that they can assure the outcome of a political election. That's election interference. It's fraud. All of these people need to go to jail. I mentioned last night that Elon Musk, with his takeover of Twitter, now has a treasure trove of evidence of all of those interactions, the collusion between the government and the social media platforms, where they requested that that information be suppressed and hidden from the public. I genuinely hope Elon doesn't just restore free speech on Twitter. I also hope he goes after the criminals who implemented this criminal regime and holds them all accountable. Okay. That's 20 minutes. That's enough for this morning. I shall see you guys tomorrow.